Hey, what's up everyone? It's Rinku, it's July 12th, and it's patch out time. There is a big bomb to be dropped. So, because there is not much going on in these patch notes before, besides a few things, I am just going to go cut straight to the point. The biggest thing today is that the EXP requirement per level has been reduced for characters below level 61. That means even level 60s like me will still get more experience. This is a buff that Korea got last week. I did not think we were going to get it. I thought it was because they had Kama Sylvia Part 2. Korea seems like if they're moving on in the world, we're still waiting for all these updates, and yet they give us the same EXP buff that Korea got. That's crazy. So everyone level 60 and below will get more experience. I'm not sure to what degree, but I believe it is significant. And it's crazy that it's for every it's like it's crazy that it's for such high levels. Like even a level 60 like me is still going to get more experience and exp at 60 let me tell you is very fucking slow so that is tremendously hype for the people that have already hit like a high level like 59 60 but still want to push on that's crazy so hopefully we get comma sylvia too for us to actually be able to train and do stuff with this uh but i'm glad to see my exp rate may rise next time i go train so that's gonna be the biggest thing now i guess we can also talk about this picture up here it's for the event there is a new event, it's the same event that Korea got last week, I'm sure there's probably videos of it already on the internet because of that, but it's the Thermian Water Park, and it just has to do with fishing, I guess, there's supposed to be mini-games, you can probably win some, like, fashionable accessories or something, uh, and it also says somewhere that it changes all the fishing rods' um, appearance just for the event time after the event, they'll go back to normal, but yeah, it's the same exact event Korea got, but it's, it's kind of cool that we get some cool new stuff. Now there is no event page. I was looking to see if there's an event page to describe all this because I still don't actually know what it's all about, but I guess I just have to play it myself. There is no like description, so I guess we have to go in game and do it ourselves. So maybe I'll make a video out of the whole event if it's that cool. Or maybe I'll just do it on stream if it's kind of kind of quick or something. We'll have to see. Um, but it's kind of cool that there is an event that to look forward to and the picture looks beautiful. Like it looks awesome. It looks like you just go to a beach and do some quests and stuff. Sounds cool. Now we also have the daily uh, rewards, of course. Every week we get them. Uh, same old stuff. It does look like we're only getting the Shakatu seals from the daily login rewards. It seems like just 10 a month. I really thought they were going to give us some more from a quest or something. I mean, maybe maybe the Thermian Water Park, but I doubt it. I have no idea if we're going to get any more of these coins from anything else. But I already have 20, so this would mark 30. I think we can get stuff with 30. So I guess at the end of the month we can finally spend this on something. I wouldn't recommend spending on, on the first reward, but you could. And of course we get the accessory box at the end, just like the usual stuff. I don't think there's anything too important there. I'm not too sure what the scroll is, I'll have to look at that in game. But um, yeah, I guess we can now go into the few other things that are in here. The most important stuff is just right here, the system updates. Alright, so going in order, the guild master's authorities can be delegated uh, if the guild master is absent for 15 days. It used to be 30 days, so if the guild master is absent for 15 days, they'll be kicked. So basically they made it a change where if the guild master AFKs for two weeks, uh, someone else can get guild master. And it's, that's a significant time cut, but most guild master, I mean, you, your guild master should be logging in at least once a week if they're going to lead a guild. Like if they're going to lead people, they should just log in and they shouldn't have a problem otherwise. But that is, that is a time difference. Like, I mean, if you go on vacation for two weeks, I mean, your guild, you, <laughs> your guild could be transferred, but, I mean, if you plan accordingly or just log the fuck in, I mean, on a laptop or something, then should be fine. But it's kind of an interesting update. It's kind of interesting to think about. Uh, should be aware, at least. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Fix the issue where five following titles are unobtainable. That's kind of cool. So, I'm not going to claim that these titles were released at launch, but I'm pretty sure I have read the titles for obtaining boss gear, like, since launch, like, on every single title page, I always saw those, and it was always, like, not obtainable or unobtainable yet, or, like, and I always wondered, like, why, why is there such a simple title for getting a boss gear, but it's not in the game yet, like, how do you actually get it, because the description always said, like, you get it from obtaining the boss gear, but no one's actually got the title from obtaining the boss gear, it's kind of funny, I just always wondered. So, I don't know if it was actually all the way from launch or if they added these titles later on, it could, but it just says it fixed the issue where they were unobtainable. So, if you obtain the armor, or the helmet, or the gloves, shoes, tree spirit, any of the five boss gear, you get a title, I guess. I'm not sure if you get it when you obtain the item, 
Like, if I buy it, what if I already have it equipped? Like, do I get the title? I'm not sure. Again, I'll have to just look in game. I have these things, so. <laughs> but it's just, it's kind of crazy to think about that these could have been in for a very long time. They're just now fixing it, so. Interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Now, the last thing, the most debatable thing, another Karma update. So when we had the first Karma update, I briefly talked about it and pretty much said it was a bad update and there was a lot of controversy in the comments. I then made a follow-up video and gave a few examples on why I thought the Karma update was bad and I still stick by those examples. Literally a few days ago, like we got Karma bombed and griefed at Pirates, it was a terrible experience by some people even more geared than me, even though I was in a five-man party and we were five people trying to train and there was no way that one person could even kill everything in the spot we were in. But yet I was troubled so this update actually does help that situation. Now I'm not going to go into this if we have a ton of controversy in these comments. I mean this is just my opinion and these videos kind of is my opinion on everything but there is, if there is more controversy. I can discuss in the comments, we can make another video discussion of even more like what you guys come up with to like comment on everything. If you guys haven't watched the past video, I'll link that description. But let's talk about this new update, let's not, let's get away from the past. So this new update is, it kind of fixes the old update but not perfectly, it's kind of like half fixing it. So it kind of helps the fact that higher geared players just straight up gank lower players I guess that's what the main problem is I guess that's what they put it in for uh, even though it kinda hurts everyone else at a higher level training in like groups and areas and higher level areas pretty much anyone that has awakening I mean that's not even like high-end content but that's kinda like getting into the game but I guess straight up ganking a really low level character gives you this full karma cost but PvPing someone with equal gear now gives you less. So it says a maximum of 120 karma can be lost when a higher level APDP, or I mean, a higher APDP stat character attacks a lower stat character. However, if you're the same stats, you'll probably lose a lot less. So if there's a low level character and maybe he doesn't know what he's doing, you're gonna lose a lot more than if there's a straight up asshole that is equally as geared and you're fighting him. Now, the biggest question is, again, how much karma do you lose? It, for example, if I'm fighting someone the exact same geared as me, how much do I lose? If I'm fighting someone that's way more geared than me, but my party's helping me, how much do I lose? Can we keep killing this guy over and over and over? Like, can we kill, can we finally, the small people, kill the stronger people? This might be a really good update, depending on how much it scales. Imagine if you can lose less than 60k for killing that. That would actually make this update way better than previous updates at all. But again, I don't know how much it scales. You may always lose a lot of karma no matter what, or they may have actually fixed the problem and made it so we can finally kill the giants, the 500 gear score griefing assholes. <laughs> I mean, I, I do agree that whoever is stronger in a war, like 5v1, if, if one person kills all five, I think you guys get the point. Let's get into the cash shop, I'll stop this debate. So finally, I do have to show off the cash shop. We did get the marine romance outfits, so let's just look at them all. We have, and also I do want to shout out the Dark Knight, thank god we have it for the Dark Knight. Do they have it for the Striker? No. <laughs> so finally the Dark Knight is getting everything, but the Striker is still too new to get the stuff. That's pretty interesting. Alright, but anyways, let's look at all, all of the classes besides the striker. So we have the Dark Knight. Very, very classy hat. You know, I like it, I like it. We have the ninja. I was thinking the Korea patch notes last week that I thought this was the most unique looking out of all of the marine romance. Pretty cool stuff, and I like the bandana. Very awesome. We have the Kunoichi. Very nice. The witch. Good stuff. The wizard. I actually thought this stood out a lot. He still has the captain vibe, even though it looks like, even though it's like, it's like not the captain's set. Like out of all of the sets, like this looks like the most in charge. I think it's kind of funny. We have the Maywa. Very nice. The Valkyrie. I like it. Not too sure if I'd buy it for my Valkyrie, but 
Still pretty good. We got the Musa. I liked like the the sweatshirt looking vibe here. Tamer with the buttons. Berserker. Oh man. <laughs> I like the straps. Sorceress. Very cool. Ranger. Looks like a schoolgirl pretty much. <laughs> and finally the warrior. The most average looking possible. So that's it. I guess that's it for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I probably pissed off a lot of people with the previous topic. <laughs> and I will see you guys later. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye bye.